So today I thought we'd take a look at this Dimensions model DSi 12, 1200N power inverter. This is the older inverter that um, I take 12.6 volts DC up to 120 amps and can put out an inverter output of 1200 watts. So this unit's not um, powering up any longer, no, no AC output. I just thought we'd um, take the cover off, take a look inside. Four Phillips and looks like it's going to be two of the five sixteenths hex on either side. All right, so definitely a lot older board. Take this fan loose from the terminals here. Get the cover out of the way now. That's all it was, just a fan. Big beefy transformer. So we do have some mild corrosion on the board. It's not like it's um it's really bad, but it probably has been subject to some moisture or humidity. You know, this Georgia humidity is going to get you right in a service truck. So the chip and all doesn't look terrible. Have to take a little bit closer look. That might be some corrosion in there. I might have to pop it out and see. But no major corrosion. All seems to be somewhat minor. We do have a lot of MOSFETs down here. Looks like 12. 12 MOSFETs on a pretty big aluminum channel for heat sink. As we turn to the back side of the board. Unfortunately we see even worse signs of corrosion than we did on the front so i have gone through and checked these transistors to make sure they're not shorted especially make sure i do have a a junction a pn junction there and um so far all of these check good i've checked them off camera as far as just for shorts, I have noticed some of this corrosion is actually coming from some of the electrolytic caps. So actually some of the caps are physically leaky. So they have leaked and starting to corrode. So I do have to uh, at least take some caps off the board at a, at a bare minimum. So I have checked so far the transistors. I went ahead and just owned out. The windings in the transformer and they're there as you would suspect the, the transformer windings itself are fine this looks like a um feedback it actually says ac feedback on the board these two black wires here from the center if you can see that going into the transformer coil is going to be a type of a high temp thermal switch and that's good Let me get this where you can see a little better sorry about that and that's going to be good. And we are getting our um, our violet or purple wires coming in. It's going to be our remote on. One really neat thing about Senseda Technologies, they still have the owner's manual online. You can pull it up. So I just wanted to verify before I hooked it up, since it was taken a loose, that this uh, the purple wire, which they have uh, they connected a blue wire to, as you can see here. I just connected it back to positive, so it should try to start up. So I know I got to take the board off and clean it and go through some electrolytic caps. But I just want to do a little bit of testing to see if there's anything else that I might have to do before. Or any of the parts I might have to order before I order. Uh, maybe a few caps. I got a good selection of caps, but I may not have them all that we need. So what I'm going to do now is just simply put a 5 amp supply, which is not near enough to run the inverter, of course, loaded. But just to simply see if we can get the power on light with the violet light having a 12 volts back for remote start. And the power supply has got 12.9 volts. 
and zero current so nothing on the current I have no LEDs on the front that's what we have right now and the 12.9 volts 3 amps So it looks like we got some corrosion on this switch, even though this switch is not used. So I got it on right now. I don't know if it's on good. I can tell us a lot of corrosion on this switch. It's in bad shape. My inverter is actually powered on. Okay, we don't. We actually have an LED on this GFCI. Look at there. It wasn't reset. Can you see that? We got the the meter a little bit closer here. It's still in the background, but there's 120 volts AC. Sixty hertz, man. Controllers are still working very well. And that's that's no load test on it yet because I only have a five amp supply. I just barely got enough supply hooked up at this time simply for testing the inverter uh power up. So the power part of that test actually went very, very well. I was not expecting to come across something that simple because that switch is hardly ever touched. It's only switch, it's switched back and forth through a relay here out in the field when it's installed in the service truck. So, But some corrosion had got that switch, which apparently it still goes through that main switch. It has to be on in order for this to cut it on, which makes sense. And... We do have some corrosion here, and some of those caps are definitely leaking. They might not be, you know, totally um, bad or shorted, but they are leaking. So I'm still going to go ahead before I go any further in load testing. I am going to go ahead and take the board off, um, repair the switch, or maybe even jump it out where it's on there and just use the remote. And then I'm going to look into repairing these caps. So I'll be back after we get the board out. It looks like I just got to, of course, take these wires loose and document. And we have some uh, some heat sinking and six Phillips screws here that goes on to that aluminum channel where those MOSFETs are for our transistor heat sink. So now with the board off, we can take a little bit closer look. See the corrosion on the switch is really bad. actually got some rust we got some corrosion down here I didn't see earlier so let me clean up on the pins miscellaneous spots and sorry I wasn't checking the focus there and we're electrolytics. We got a few here to replace. This leaked out. It's starting to corrode through the pads. So we'll probably caught this in time. We'll clean it up and make sure. Hopefully we won't have to replace the pad. Because sometimes. Sometimes after we replace the cap. And remove it. The pad might go with it. But no bulging on the big caps. Which is surprising. They nip on Chemicon. Some good caps. Eighty six, eighty eight copyright must be the EEPROM, the firmware is flashed with. So back now with the board cleaned up, it cleaned up really well. It had so much to be cleaned up. I actually used lacquer thinner on it. I didn't notice this board had a conformal coating, but when I started cleaning it, it did start bubbling up. So it did have a light coating of a. Of some type of conformal coating on it but it ended up it did clean up good it's still some residue where well, I decided to quit um, to quit scrubbing because it was taking some of the right and off some of the components but instead of the white vinegar and alcohol I decided to go for the lacquer thinner on this one it was so much to clean up but we'll see a lot of that corrosion is removed and uh, one thing I think I forgot to do it on video was to show there was corrosion down this side 
of this Intel processor chip. So I did take it out, cleaned it up very well, and just going to simply place it back in the amp socket holder. If you're interested, that is a Intel EE80C196MC microprocessor. It's a 16 megahertz, 16 bit. So next, I thought I would go through and check, especially these large capacitors, and just check the ESR value. So I went across and checked them, which they're all in parallel. So it does show with low ESR. The other thing is I cleaned this switch up good, and it actually checks really good now. There we go, that's our own position. If I had any more issues with it, I'd probably just run a jumper and jump across. Keep it on all the time. I may still do that. I'll talk to the owner, see what he prefers. Since it does come back to the purple remote start. So I think that's got everything cleaned up and working order. We can see now we have no corrosion on none of the pins on our processor. We do have a couple caps to swap out. But I do have several of 25 volt 100 microfarad, which is what these are. So I'm going to replace these and we'll be right back. Clean it up with some alcohol and remove that rising flux. One more thing I think I forgot to mention. I do have to replace this uh, DC brushless fan. The cooling fan for the inverter. And the only thing really worthy of noting is they did pop rivet it in. It's still available. It's not very hard to find. It's not mechanically bound. It's just electrically opened up. But we will have to drill out these rivets, which won't be too bad, but we said we to put fasteners there. We'll put fasteners when we put it back in. But just wanted to mention that's one other component that we do have to change on this inverter. Probably pretty common for the age of it.
remote start. I have transformer thermals. The white to the GFCI. The white to the grounds at the bottom. And the white to the cap. And the white to the transformer secondary. And then we go, let's see, gray to the um, transformer feedback circuit. And then the white. And then the black that goes to the circuit breaker. And then the black that goes to the cap. And then we got our black from our transformer output. So that's our 120 volt output AC from my transformer. All right, I'm just going to double check this right quick off camera. We'll put the power to it. Back now with a little bit beefier supply. I got a 12 volt battery hooked up to it. And I have a load here. It's a 100 watt lamp just wired in. I won't run it, but about a few seconds here. So we can start it up. There we go. So even at 100 watt, 120 watts or so, about an amp. I still a big load off 12 volt battery, so won't run it but just a second or so. And this is our sine wave coming off our 12 volts AC. That's coming off of our bank transistors that's going into this, the primary of this transformer. So now we're on the AC side with the oscilloscope. Oh, look at that's a pretty sine wave. Don't get much prettier than that. If you like this look into this inverter today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.